And then there's this teaching. Someone says, you know, if I, why must I tithe? If I take the money, by the way, notice the GL says unrighteous mammon just now. So the word, if not been faithful in the use of unrighteous mammon. Do you know that the default mode of money to God is unrighteous? It's filthy. I used to say things like many years ago, if a good man picks money, it becomes good money. A bad man picks money, it becomes bad money. But God says, no, money is unrighteous. Money is unclean. Because as a whole, the way money has been used around the world is unrighteous. People are being deprived. People are being bullied. People are being, you know, manipulated. And a lot of unrighteous money. But God says the way you, you, you make the money un, uh, holy, uh, Romans 11, if the first fruit is holy, the lamb is also holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. Got it? If I take the first fruit, the rest become holy. And what is holy, the devil cannot touch. Are you listening, people? Now, Luke 11. Rather give alms of such things as you have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. Jesus said this. It's amazing that people say, oh, uh, they take my revelation of Jesus touching the leper, and the clean make the unclean clean. Right? You know what they say? Why should I tie? You know, if I take the money, I am clean. The money is unclean. It's not clean. That's warp. It's like, let us sin more that grace may abound. I understand where the kind of reasoning comes from. Now, with your kind of warp reasoning, I can also say, I go to Geelang. I'm clean. I touch a prostitute. She's unclean. Now, she's clean. <laughs> I'm a drug addict, but I'm a Christian. Amen? I'm clean. I take the drug. Now, I touch the drug. It's clean. <laughs> I can... Don't get warp. Don't get warp. All this happened because a lack of church life. There's no one speaking into the, these people's lives. Are you listening, people? Amen. Then Jesus said, give alms. There are some things you must do with money. Money is not part of you. You are clean, yes. You are righteous, yes. But money is unrighteous. So you take the first fruit and now the rest becomes holy. Amen. What is holy thrives, grows, multiplies. The devil cannot touch. Amen. Then Jesus talked about tithing here. Woe unto you now. He, he gives you the right reason for tithing. All right. Woe unto you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. In other words, they, they tithe legalistically, all right, but they don't tithe with the love of God, with justice in mind. Amen. To make sure that the fatherless, the poor and all things. So it's just saying that do it the right motive. He's talking about the motive, not the tithe. Because he went on to say, this ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. What is the other? The tithe. So a lot of people read this and they say, you know, he's telling us, you see, it's not the tithe. It's your love, the love of God. No, friend. He said, do it with the right motive, but don't stop tithing. Don't leave the other undone. Amen. These are the words of Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Now, back to Hebrews 7. Show them Hebrews 7 verse 4. Now, consider how great this man Melchizedek was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a ten of the spoils. Yeah, it's true. The book of Hebrews, as I've taught, and many people have taken this teaching and run with it, that the book of Hebrews shows the first chapter, Jesus is greater than the angels. But they show him how he's greater. He rose from the dead. Amen. Then he thought, Jesus is greater than Moses. Moses is a servant. Jesus is a son. It showed, showed clearly that he's a son. Is greater. When it comes to Hebrews 7, Melchizedek priesthood is greater than Levitical priesthood. Yes. But show how is he greater? The tithe. Here's the answer. Now consider how great this man was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a ten of the spoils. Whoever you tithe to, you are declaring that person is great. Amen. So when Melchizedek brought the bread and wine, is to proclaim Jesus' death. When you respond with the tithe, is to respond he's alive. Drop down. Here, mortal men receive tithes. Now, mortal men, people who die, right, receive tithes. But there, Jesus receives them. Of whom it is witness that he lives. Can you see it? Here, mortal men receive tithes, right? People who die receive tithes. Amen? People who are mortal. But there, he receives your tithes. Of whom it is witness that he lives. Is a witness. So, the bread and wine is to proclaim his death. The tithe is to proclaim he's alive. And, and people will see your life and they will see he's alive. Just like old Jacob, 
He didn't believe his sons when they say, Joseph is alive, Joseph is alive. When he stepped out, he saw the wagons. Then he says, enough, my son is alive. People will see evidence of God's blessing on your life to the point that they'll say, God is alive. Or Jesus is alive. Amen? So the Lord's Supper is to proclaim his death. The tithe is to proclaim he's alive in your life. And all the people said, Amen. give Jesus the praise. Amen. All right, so was this explanation of tithing as Christians in the New Testament or under the New Covenant uh, correct? Is it biblical? Well, as we saw, he used a lot of scripture. He did touch on New Testament scriptures. Um, and if you, you know, you listen to this video, you might have got lost in a lot of the wording that he used, a lot of analogies and just, um, you know, deep type of language. Um, as far as, you know, Old Testament stories and Melchizedek and Christ being dead and alive and the wine and the bread and all this stuff. Um, I just want to break, break this down real quick to you guys. Um, just want to clarify, um, what scripture really tells us Christians about tithing and giving and donating to ministries, to churches, to ministers and all that. So basically if you look at scripture, if you look at the New Testament, you're going to see in the letters of Paul, the apostle, and the letters of uh, Peter, and the words of Christ, you're going to see that money, you know, doesn't go from good to bad, depending on the person who has it, right? Uh, money is not even um, condemned. You know, what is, what is stated in the scripture is that as followers of Christ, we are to live for Christ and not to live for the riches of this world, not to live for wealth, not to live for money. It is said that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So you loving money, whether you tithe or not, you living for money, you living for success and in financial uh, wealth and prosperity, that's going to lead you to a lot of evil actions, evil thoughts, evil doings that God is going to later judge you on. So you have to be careful with how you receive these messages because they're going to be twisted and they're going to be, you know, manipulated in order to make you feel like, hey, as long as you're tithing, you can do what you want with your money or you can live, you know, in, 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 in a way that your flesh wants to live. And then they're just completely disregarding the words of Christ. You know, Jesus said to seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. Right. So we have to remember that even if we tithe, even if we're given to ministries in our heart, we're still not supposed to love money, pursue money and live for money, regardless of how much we give to a church or to a preacher. Does that make sense? Number two, in the scriptures, we see clearly the reason for giving, the reason for tithing. Um, in the scriptures, we see that the apostle clearly tells the church, hey, whoever it is that is teaching you and sowing spiritual things to you and helping you grow, in the knowledge of the Lord. That's who you should be helping financially, materialistically. So why do we give? Why do we donate? Why do we tithe? In order to help the person or persons who are teaching us the word of God and helping us grow in Christ and mature spiritually. That's the reason we give. In the scriptures, it doesn't say that we tithe or we give to the church in order to not be cursed or in order for our money to not be cursed or in order to cleanse our money. Let's get this right, guys. So number one, even if we tithe, we're still not supposed to be having the love of money in us. And number two, we are giving or we are tithing in order to help the person or people who are teaching us the word of God. So if nobody's teaching you the word of God, are you supposed to be giving? Not according to scripture. If somebody's teaching you the word of God, are you supposed to be helping them financially? Yes, according to scripture, according to the New Testament, it doesn't give you a percentage. It doesn't give you an amount. It could be 50%. It could be, it could be all you have, like they did in the book of Acts. They gave everything they had to the apostles and brought it to their feet in the early church. Do you guys remember that? So you have to remember 
what scripture says and not allow these type of, you know, clips to, to make you feel like, okay, you know what? I just want to declare that Jesus is alive. I want my money to be good and cleansed now. I uh, want to be able to say that the devil cannot touch my money. Listen, if you're not submitting to God, <laughs> if you're walking in the flesh, if you're walking in darkness, the devil can touch you and everything about you, even your wallet. You tithing does not matter. Okay? If you're submitting to God and you're resisting the devil, guess what? That's when he flees. Not when he tithes. Not when you tithe. When you submit to God and resist him. When you walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Let's remember what scripture teaches, guys, because a lot of people are getting confused. So let's grow in Christ by the truth according to to scriptures. This is the truth about giving. This is the truth about tithing. And in this video and my perspective on it helped you understand the word of God and helped you grow in Christ a little bit today. Please hit the like button. That's going to help this video circulate. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Let's Grow in Christ. I'm going to keep bringing these videos to help you learn the word of God easier, better, and faster. So don't forget, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Let's grow.